Hey, this is Shango from Shaping Fire. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I uh, sat down with Kevin Jodry and asked him a whole bunch of questions that I really wanted to know his opinion on, but nobody else seemed to be asking him. So uh, this is first in a series that you're going to get, uh, you know, over the next couple weeks, and uh, uh, they cover the topics can uh, you know cover everything from uh, growing specifically for pre rolls to uh, choosing the quality of terpenes to use in manufacturing your cannabis products, all the way through to like you know snitching, you know what what's going on with snitching in California and even uh, even his mom on his Facebook page and, and what's up with that so anyway it's gonna be a good series this is number one uh, here we go so Kevin you know when you were up speaking on bash on island um, you said this great thing in your lecture and I wanted to give you a chance to break it out a little bit mm -hmm. um, you said that there are is a particular way to grow for pre-rolls right mm -hmm. and the like, pre-rolls have taken off but but you were very clear that there are there are types of strains that you want to use for pre-rolls and definitely ones that you do not so I want to give you an opportunity to break that out about how to choose your strains if they're gonna end up in pre-rolls pre-rolls are a unique type of uh, cannabis delivery system because you've taken the flowers and you ground them and so you've oxidized them, you've exposed them to oxygen, which starts to break them down. And because they're typically um, consumed in that smokable form, you end up having a long cylinder of smoking material. And so cannabis that has a high monoterpene, very loosely molecularly bonded scent molecules, they're outstanding for flower sales and for oil sales because the nose can pick it up. But you typically don't pick up those smells through the rolling paper. And they're also very temperature sensitive and, and the process of handling, grinding, exposing the air diminishes them. Right. And so for pre-rolls, what you really want to seek is a sesquiterpene dominant strain. And one can even take a look now with all the terp reports and find out which varietals have these high sesquiterpenes. And when you're doing sifting, say, through a line, so say we're sifting through a, a lemon haze line, mm -hmm. we would go through the lemon haze line and we would look to see which ones of these phenotypes that we're selecting, our cultivars we're trying to select, have a higher sesquiterpene signature. Because what that does is it has a much higher heat resistance in its um, resiliency to stay active. And so as you start to consume the pre-roll, the flavor in the front of the joint when you smoke it should be very close to the same at the back of the joint. And with a lot of the pre-roll products is we get a hit that tastes okay, and then it's just smoke. And the problem is that it gives pre-rolls a bad name. Yeah. And for people who like to smoke joints, they're typically rolling a flower fresh, meaning they're breaking it up themselves, they're preparing it. So they get everything in this beautiful package, and when they buy something pre-prepared, it's diminished. And for me, it's a lot simpler to just find the right varietals that have a higher sesquiterpene. And, and a good example would be the, the old Mendo Perps, the Urkel, the Barney, all those Perps that were so resilient and they were so popular because blunts at that time was such a in vogue form of smoking. And you have this large cylinder of cannabis that you're burning, so there's really a lot of heat. The Mendo Perp, the Urkel, had an ability to hold the flavor all the way to the bitter end. And so it allowed people to enjoy the experience the entire time. And when we started to really look at pre-rolls and this how the market accepts it, I realized that that's where we had to focus. And so if you're gonna go do pre-rolls and you're trying to get into that distribution, you might find that the varieties you sold as flour aren't necessarily best for pre-roll. And you have to kind of re-sift your population and then use terp analysis to give you an idea which ones really have a much higher level of sesquiterpenes heavily more bonded. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's clear that you know in the early days, especially in medical, people would use their, their B and C mm -hmm. stuff and put those into the pre-rolls because uh, you know they, they were going to be chewed up and no one would see them. But now with so many more people involved, the, the, the pre-roll game has gotten a lot better and it makes a lot more sense to put, you know, maybe not your super bag appeal A, but at least your A minus stuff that's got sesquiterpenes mm -hmm. in it um, so people can even take Taste it. You know, tasting it down to the roach is a rare thing. Well, well, it also opens up another market of things that aren't necessarily visually attractive. And so flower market has to be beautiful because people see it. But once you grind it and turn it into a product, no one has any idea what it is. Yeah. And so therefore it allows you to pick different varietals that really would shine in a pre-roll environment where you get a lot of quantity of the flower, it has a high sesquiterpene component, it's not bag appeal A+. Plus. But who cares? Yeah. So it allows you to have some choices to work with on your farm so you have more of a distribution. And I think that what really happened to was the consumer got educated. And so back in the day, you got whatever you could. Let me go turn that off. Okay. Okay. Sure.
It has the right idea though, because it, it got hot in here fast as soon as it closed the doors. Oh, yeah, but yeah, it gets, it, 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 it'll, it'll pull 110 in here. So that's why this is such a tough room to run plants in. Yeah. But they never allowed us to make any changes. Dude, I've been on, I've been on regulatory the regulatory gauntlet for a while. Yeah. <laughs> so we get back to the topic. Um, the customer became educated. And so back in the day, you received cannabis. It was from wherever it was from. Then you received cannabis from your street dealer and it was what they could grab. And then you got into the rise of dispensaries where you had an incredible amount of cannabis being grown everywhere, constantly being brought into these storefronts that allowed tremendous numbers of people to buy cannabis on a normal, consistent level that they could examine. And it educated them. So you can't dump your low-end cannabis into pre-rolls anymore, just as you can't dump any low-end cannabis into concentrates because people have an expectation of, of flavor profile. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't work to dump quality products that should be in a bag into a pre-roll, and it doesn't make sense to take stuff that should be in a pre-roll into a bag. Mm -hmm. And so once you see that, it allows you to differentiate what you're working with on the farm, and things that don't require the visual beauty are a lot less labor-intensive. Right. And so it gives you some options in terms of profitability, I think. Right on, cool, thanks for breaking that out. No worries, right on.